Good evening, fleets. Yes, that's two fleets this time because tonight we will have the matchup of DC and BBE from Beagle Point. And this was, this will be our farewell to Beagle Point after spending a week here with BBE. And tonight we will have two guests, Commander Chanta. Welcome. Good evening. And Commander Colon Tree, welcome. Good evening. And, Good evening. Uh, Thank you. And as usual, I'm here with my co host, Macros Black. Hi, Macros. Hello, Hink. Uh, Macros Black here. Yeah. How did your SRV races go? Oh, fairly well. I won one, and, but, but I have to give the victory away to Karaya because. I, yeah. I'm one of the prize givers, so it wouldn't be fair for me to collect my my own prize or yeah. claim it from you, Henke. <laughs> yeah. So I gave my prize away. I I gave my prize away to Commander Karaya. Yeah. yeah, same as I did for Commander Lon Lonchon Silver because I won the first race and I gave it to Commander Lonchon Silver, who came in second. And actually tonight, uh, I gave away three prizes. One for Launch on Silver, one for Karaya, and one to Commander Disorganize, who won the last race in a very superior fashion. Yeah, and the third race was really, really, really tight. It was really tight one. It was so tight. And Commander Disorganize won the third race, yeah. Yeah, I... I was gonna. I was hopefully. I was hoping to, uh, the, yeah, just uh, last more than one race. But I took a tumble initially and uh, exploded, basically. So I have one spare SRV, and I'm not losing that one. So our master location, if in case someone doesn't know, is at the visitor beacon at Beagle Point, so everyone should head up here and we will do the matchup from here, so there shouldn't yeah, be any a, any hostile NPCs this time so let's hope that no one gets attacked Figures crossed on that one, so far I've only seen uh, Orcas and Beluga NPCs Oh my, that was quite close that in the there but yeah, we have two guests guests tonight, so I think you can fire away with your questions, Macros. Let's start with you, Commander Janta. How how have you felt about the expedition so far? Uh, well, we're doing great. It's um, ship still in one piece. Uh, I took um, repair limpets with me, so I can repair the hull when needed. Mm. And the only downside so far is that I lost one SRV on the on the way here. So I'm down to the last one, and I need to take, take care of that one, keep it in one piece, and uh, nurse it home. At this point, I have to ask, how did you lose it? Well, it, it was on the planet with um, some nice flat surfaces, and... Uh, a canyon that was very, very rough, and there was a nice plateau in there, and I just dropped off the, off the edge of that. And ah, um, yeah, I, I think I remember you told. Eventually, about ended up in, in in very narrow canyon, and there was just no way out. Yeah, oh, I, I I remember something. I think you wrote about that in the forums. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Because there's obviously a way out to start uh, the non horizons version and you spawn in orbit with the SRV in place, but it wouldn't feel right for me. So I sacrificed the SRV and uh, continued with the single one. Yeah. Yeah, there's at least an Akali 2 with me. Sorry? There's at least an Akali 2 SRVs with me. I didn't quite understand that, but I, I did carry two, yeah. No, yeah, I 
Oh yeah, I carry two. Uh, oh, I right. lost one. You lost so column three. Well. <laughs> Yo. Right. Call on free, you lost one SRV tonight, right? Yeah, um, yeah. The the first SRV race, uh, which I was not expecting to lose because I I've, I've practically been parked at the landing zone for the best part of a week, and yeah, um, what can I say? <laughs> Well, it is a known bug when multiple commanders are, are gathered that SRVs are yeah. very vulnerable and they are somehow their hull turns into paper. And yeah. yeah, and uh, as I said yeah, during that, the, yeah, I'll give you that. As I said during when you lost your SRV, I really recommend that you contact Super because the more we send those uh, request tickets, the more I hope that Frontier will investigate the problem with the SRV damage because it's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, it's a bit ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, no, I came out, I went out to Colonia via the Perseus arm, uh, via the Bubble Nebula, and yeah, I had a really nice time coming out here. But yeah, uh, coming back to you, Colontri, uh, you aren't officially part of DC or BPE, so you're on your own solo expedition, but you just happen yeah. to be here at the Beagle Point. So, what's uh, your um, what's your story in short? Yeah, uh, yeah, about that. Uh, initially, I thought, well, I quite fancied visiting the Bubble Nebula. Um, I went out to the Bubble Nebula, uh, met a few of my friends that were nearby, and after that, I thought, well. I'm far enough out of the bubble that I can start heading towards Colonia again. So I headed to Colonia, uh, bought a dolphin, uh, did a couple of passenger missions just to pass time, and then I then I uh, I was browsing EDSM and I realised that well there was two expeditions heading out to Beagle Point. So I thought, in for a penny, in for a pound. Hmm. That's nice. The pound, call on three. Oh yeah, I'm here. Entertainment. I, I I arrived here with about sixty five percent hull because a fair amount of it was uh, Newton jumping, but Long John Silver. When I landed at base camp, they they had the pair limpets. I carry one AFM, so. Cool. Correct me if I'm wrong, Colin Free, but um, yeah. your neutron star jumping isn't it only your FSD that takes damage and not your hull? Yeah, but um, some well, uh, I I came across a few black holes as well, mm -hmm. and generally we get too close to the uh, exclusion zone. Uh, as I often do. <laughs> uh, yeah. I also King. had a... I'm pretty sure I had an incident on a high G planet as well. So... Yeah. yeah the most dangerous thing that ever happened for Explorer was the introduction of Horizons. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, white Dwarfs are mm. one of the things that I fear most currently. I generally don't try and neutral boost white dwarfs now. Neither. I, I, are, I, I, I lost a I lost a diamondback explorer uh, on my first trip to Sagittarius A because of one. So yeah, those little suckers. They are really dangerous. I tend to avoid the the white yeah, dwarfs myself. They are really use, use, useless. Just scan them and get out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Janta, can you tell us a bit about your commander background? Well, the background, it's, it's not really that I'm a... a um, it's not re Janta is not really a personality that I play as a um, role-playing game. 
but I started the game and registered and I just, you know, fly around, uh, find missions, uh, things to do. Uh, sometimes you need permits, so you need side missions to get the permit and then carry on from there. And, you know, it's just no real target, just flying around and having fun generally. Hmm. So that, that's the background. Hmm. So how long has you been playing Elite Dangerous? Uh, less than two years. And I think about two thirds of the distance that I've played has been on DC. Well, it is a long e expedition, I'll give <laughs> you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Janta, tell us about your ship. The ship, well, it's T6. As most people know, that's nice. Um, the only T six we have in the fleet. Yeah, yeah we do, and th that really surprised me. Yeah, um, me too. So it, it's not really a choice of passion or anything. It's um, I was on the first silly ships expedition with the hauler, mm. and the goal of that expedition was to take some ships out that were really not suitable for for, for exploration. So the eagles and the federal gunships and some just being silly. And uh, I looked in the topic um, and there was a list at the bottom. These ships are not suitable because they're very good explorers. And the T6 was on that list. <laughs> and it was very cheap. But so see, I thought yeah. if I want to go into exploration, I'd get a T6, get some money and then get a proper exploration ship. But <laughs> I think I kind of stuck to it. So that's the background the how I got to the T6, yeah. Mm. Yeah, the T6 is a very nice ship, transport-wise and also exploration-wise. Yeah. Yes. Does it? Fod man is a mighty uh, Type 6. Oh my god. Huh? So, uh, you have a T6 as well, Colin, Frey? But you're not flying I used it. to have one. I traded it. I mostly used it as a... Uh, yeah, I... That was my main uh, cargo ship until I pawned it for the Type 7. And very recently, before I left the bubble, I traded it for a Type 9. And I, yeah, the stock Type 9 was making me miss my Type 7 a lot. The Type 9 is a pig. But it can <laughs> carry a lot, so. So you say that Type 9 is a pick. In in what sense? Um, and no, I love would that my sense T9. be like you're flying not in space but in the molasses? Yeah, pretty much. I'm kind of used to flying maneuverable small ships. Like for a while, I flew the Cobra 3, and uh, my main combat ship in the bubble is a Vulture. So, yeah, I I, I enjoy flying those, uh, but <laughs> the Type Nine is just, yeah, it's it's like molasses, as you say. Yeah, a little. So you still have the Type Nine. Little. Yeah, it's sitting. It's sitting in a station somewhere. <laughs> a little bit of notice in at this point. Uh, I think we are in the middle of the. NPC spawning point because I can see constant spawning of NPC belugas and orcas who come to this visitor beacon. So this might be getting interesting at some point because and now some beluga has. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Henga! Just it, as you said that, yeah, I got rammed by a yeah. beluga. <laughs> yeah, I saw oh that in God. this stream. It got in the stream. Oh, yeah. I saw that. God. I was just about to say that. I think we should. Just oh, a pirate here. Of... We have a just just a heads up, everyone. We have a NPC pirate here. So if, if you're carrying oh, anything, be prepared shit. to be attacked. Really? Please keep that in mind. Oh man. Be on your toes. So I. I have uh, self. So we have an SP this... explorer, but he's heading off. He's chasing. I think he's chasing something else. Okay, so yeah, he's chasing the beluga liner. <laughs> if you have, if you have any bounty on your head from the bubble, you might get into trouble here. 
that's it's up, the, guys. The, Be prepared to, to jump yeah. out if you get a get, yeah, get and, attack. Uh, well, we have to wait and see how this progresses because <laughs> I'm a bit uneasy I with just, the NPCs. I wonder nothing for me here. Wolf being Yeah. Be on your toes, guys, please. Yeah, yeah. Keep your eyes open. So I, I think it's time for plan B. If if it gets too hot at the tourist bacon then to tourist beacon, bacon then we'll uh, relocate to the primary star. Um, yeah, yeah. Just a heads up. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. But now we we'll just wait and see what what's what's happening. But yeah, I, I think it it was funny that the bellow got hit hit you and uh, <laughs> <laughs> saw that happen. <laughs> Just if that's you have shields, then say. keep four pips to assist, please. Mm -hmm. Just in case. Yeah, good point. Uh, okay. Call on free. Can can you tell us a bit about? Whoa! Oh my oh, god! Oh. oh my god! That was so close. Yeah, so there you were saying. I you was know, saying before yeah. I, I I got pushed over by Jackie Silver's uh, awesome Imperial color. Can can you tell us a bit about your commander background? About my what? So the your, your, your commander, your commander background. Are you role playing a commander or just playing along as uh, Jancha mentioned here? Well, initially, when I when I started, uh, I was doing a lot of work for the Federation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and. Uh, after a while, uh, the bubble got a bit too much, so I decided to go to Colonia. And yeah, and yeah, I'm basically out here now. I've after my first trip to Colonia, I I had a few small expeditions. After that, uh, I went to Witch's Head. Uh, went to the Bubble Nebula on the way to Colonia for the second time. I went along the Perseus Arm as well, which not a lot of people travel along, uh, which surprised me. So, and you're saying that because you found a lot of ONTAC systems. Yeah. Um, but, but I can tell you, Colin Free, that if, if you go on the very edge of the Paris Pressure Sam, you you find uh, some familiar commanders out there oh, yeah. that have been have been tagging the systems all along the the very edge of the galaxy. I know because I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I know a lot of people that have been going on the higher and lower mm. planes as well, trying to tag stuff as well. So, so your commander is based in Colonia. Uh, well, I'm currently based in Seoul. Well, most of my stuff is based in Seoul currently, but uh, so, yeah. so I, I didn't I, I'm, to... I'm a nomad essentially. So, uh, yeah. oh my god, I would are... love to move to Colonia, but unfortunately, they don't have any A grade stuff that I need there yet. Well, my, my alt commander is located in Colonia permanently, and he bought some modules in Bubble, and he transferred them to Colonia. Yeah, but how much did that cost you? Because it must have been a fair amount. Uh, yeah, it cost something, but the smallest modules aren't, aren't that too expensive to transfer, so... Only the biggest ones, like... Eight, eight fuel scoops and stuff like that can cost a fortune, but I don't have to trans transfer them all at once. So, oh my God, we are in the middle of the traffic jam at the moment. This is this is going to get interesting. Sitting here, how many how many people do we have now? Uh, there's handful of commanders. Ten, I count 10, 11 commanders right now. Those NPCs constantly jumping to, to here is... I think they're going to make this quite interesting and they might mess Hi. up with our instancing also. 
I'm I'm not sure that they will do, but as more and more commanders are gathering, more and more NPCs will be here. Yeah, but they might affect the. I I also. think there's a an allotment of NPCs per commander, so it it. I can probably. Yeah. But let's. Well, let's see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, Jota. Hello. Um. Janta, back to you. Yes. To join the DEC. Uh, how did Adi Sats join DEC? Was that a question? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was a question. Why, oh, right. why did you choose to, to join this expedition? Um, well, it's obviously easily the, the, the post on the forum. And uh, I visited the forum a lot because. I was quite new to the game, and the forum has a lot of information, so I visited it a lot. And then you notice some topics that keep pushing to the, to, to the top of the list. And this one was on it. And uh, the very minute that I started reading, I thought, oh, this is interesting. And mm -hmm. the two things that were most interesting were that the, the, the pace of the expedition would be quite slow. So I think it was 14K in two weeks, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I figured, well, th that's that's something that even a casual player can manage. So yeah, for me, that that would be just right. And it's and it, second it, thing was it, that the the expedition was going to go past uh, Star One, and that was something that that has fascinated me from also from the the forum that I read some people visiting Star One, which was quite an achievement. Yeah, and I looked up the jump range that you needed. And think well, I can get the T6 to get that range. So those things things combined, I said, okay, I joined up to star one, and then see how it goes. But I, I'm not leaving. So that's nice. And nice. Uh, our base isn't even 14k per week, two weeks. It's 12k. Yeah, exactly. It's very doable, even for a casual player. Yeah, but uh, 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 which reminds me, at this point, I should mention that our next base camp will not be in two weeks, in, but it's it's going to be next week. So only seven days to make the twelve k, and it's because our big point meet up with BPE was delayed for one week, and that's the main reason. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, you need to you need to keep going, you know. But uh, the next base camp will be in a week, so next Saturday will be base camp 16, so just keep that in mind. Someone home. And I have this nice ticker in the stream, in the top of the stream, reminding of our departure date and the next base camp location system. I'm being repaired right now. Is that what that does? Oh my god. Man. <laughs> I'm curious to see how long this instance will be holding up. Uh, right now it looks very good. Yeah. Very good indeed. So, Janta, did, did, did you have any problems uh, reaching Star 1 or was it a walk in the park? Well, I, I did get a route from, I think, one of the websites. There was a route to Star One, mm -hmm. and I pretty much followed that route there, and mm, it was relatively easy. A lot of boosts were needed because, you know, the T6 is not very, I think, max jump range for me is 42, something like that, and on yeah. fumes a bit more. So a, a lot of boosted jumps were needed, but... Apart from that, no, not really an issue. I think the the second far star about after that, I think that was Ericsson's. That was yeah. a bit more of a challenge because I did not have a route there. So I had to plot it for myself, but that was harder, but a lot more fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is absolutely more fun to, to find your own route, but, but if you are in a well, to, to the limit uh, destination type of type of range ship, then then you you can spend a lot of time reaching your end destination. But but then again, that is part of the journey, and 
also also uh, you you get a personal satisfaction when you finally reach your destination when when you find your own route there exactly yeah well, i find i I don't especially hold back. when you bug your own systems. Yeah, yeah especially that, Colin Free, especially that. I'm in a hurry and I need to get somewhere and then and I absolutely follow a written route, absolutely. If I'm in a hurry, I would absolutely do that. Oh my god, we... We have a nice bunch of ships here already, so... And they're still making a ship tower at the Darwin's legacy, it seems, so... <laughs> Colon Free, you mentioned you would be going back from Beagle Point to... Was it Colonia or back to the bubble? Well, I'm probably gonna go back to the bubble, because... Uh, one of my friends has a minor faction out in Pyramir, but I'm yeah. going to go back via Colonia uh, for obvious reasons. Just, yeah, for safety reasons, basically. So you're going to sell your exploration data at Colonia? Yep. So the oh T6. You're you're not flying a T6 now, right? You're you're flying. I'm flying my ass. Uh, my game just crashed. Yeah, mine too. So, the instance is getting full. Yeah, it seems so. Shouldn't wing any more commanders into uh, this. This is this crap again. But I will start the game again and see where I will end up. But yeah, it seems that instance is getting full at this point. Yeah. And how many commanders are we right now? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're still listed in the... Oh, they went there. Uh, we are not even 10 commanders in the instance. Oh, there was commanders. I used the camera to pan around and there were so many ships because there was ships from the BPE also. There appears to be a chieftain right above me. For chieftain uh, on the expedition now, that is AW that has rejoined us. Oh, yeah. He he was flying. Henga wasn't AW flying. What? Mm, I think he had correctly. I can't remember. Hmm. It seems that I got back eight. to the some instance. I'm with Colocasa. I don't see. I don't see it. Yeah, I'm with Colocasa and Chantai seems at the same instance yeah so i think we have two instances now yeah at least oh man well, well this was this was to to be expected so yeah it was so colon free um as asp explorer yep you're going, you're going to back to so a whole lot of exploration data. Absolutely. Um, no. <clears throat> yeah, I went from the bubble along the Perseus arm to the bubble nebula and took the long way to Colonia as well. I've been out of the bubble for eight weeks now. And I I mean, I've, I've done Colonia before. I've managed bubble to colonia in less than two weeks but i've been a lot busier recently so so when you get back and sell all that exploration data will, will are you considering buying a, a real exploration ship wow um 
I'm, 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 serious, I'm, te actually, I'm teasing you, yeah, Colin. I, I, I've already, I've already considered my next exploration ship, and I think it may be an orca. Largely because not many people uh, fly side Kruger ships, and the dolphin I have out in Colonia is extremely fun to fly. Mm-hmm. I was about to take and, the orca. Uh, I mean, they even have decent jump range now, so... Yeah. So where's, where are you saying dolphin, or <clears throat> did you say Yeah, orca? yeah, yeah, I have a dolphin as a passenger ship out in Colonia. I haven't A rated it yet because, yeah, there's no A rated uh, outfitters in Colonia yet. So, Colonel Free, your audio is dropping out, so. Some part of your uh, voice cannot be heard by us. Uh, I don't know what. Uh, Can you hear me fine now? I'm trying to get back to your instance macros, but I drop back to the one with the call case. I can so. give you, I can give you an invite. So if you jump out, yeah, I have to go the super cruise first. Should be okay. Break the instance. Yeah. Colonel Free, you are you are going back to the bubble to to help your your local faction. Yeah, it's uh, one one of my one of my friends just uh, recently had their their minor faction approved by in-game after about six months. So I'm gonna help them out a bit. Uh -huh. Sometimes we do PvP, but I'm not great at PvP, so mm. it's why I'm an explorer. <laughs> <laughs> As most of us are. <laughs> Not much PvP going on at Beagle Point. Oh my god! Sorry, oh, oh, hello, Inka. Sorry I hit someone. Hi, Hinka. Yeah, to... I guess who, Hinka? You're standing, <laughs> you're standing in the middle of the doorway, man. I'm sorry. Uh, my fault. My bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then again, the doorway is quite big when you consider that you're flying a T10, right? <sighs> Yeah. So it, it's 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 more like a hangar donger. Yeah, but it's oh, the, someone just jumped out in front of me. It's not the fatty's fault if the doorway is blocked. Ah, oh, that's the NPCs that are. That are, that are oh, oh, always, out. always playing with the fat ones. Always. always. <laughs> so, Col Colon Free, if 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 you're not helping your faction with PvP or doing PvP, in what other ways will you be helping your local player faction? Uh, I I do a lot of uh, cargo and data learning in faction systems, basically. Um, yeah, federation systems. Yeah. So, how many systems do your faction have? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, they have a few, about 30 light years around their home system. Mm. That's about it. Uh, yeah. Like I say, I've been out of the bubble for eight weeks. I sometimes don't keep up with these things. So, I, I, I don't know how player local player factions work when they initially get created, but... but... Don't you just get one system when when you get your local player system, faction? Yeah, full system. Uh, you, you, you know, you would probably have to ask Radio Sidewinder about that because I did a lot of uh, missions for those guys as well. Uh, they're based in Targo, and they've got a, they've got more than a few systems down Targo. What about you, Henke? Would you know that? You, I know you were in a faction back in the Yeah, world. Yeah, we started with one one system and it's our home system. You have to give your designated system with where you want to be located and that's your yeah, home. Of course. And then you can expand. But you just start with, with one, right? Yeah. The and, thereafter. Yeah. And very with very low... Uh, 
What's the word? God damn. Influence. Yeah, influence. That's the word. But that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Um, can can you tell us about your your goals for your uh, for your journey on the the ECE? Now the main goal is is uh, quite simple, J just to complete the expedition. <laughs> just hit as many waypoints as possible, and uh, return safe home. Mm. And as far as I can see, the only waypoint that I had to miss, because that, that was really out of miss, out of reach, that was Manifest Destiny. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think the rest, it should all be manageable with the T6. So that's the goal. Hit yeah. as many waypoints as possible and complete circumnavigation. Well, yeah. Well, well, you know what? Um, it's it's really south, down south from here. And going south is, is always easier to me than, than going north. No. <laughs> Well, that's nice. But, uh, yeah, I think you're right. So, I agree. I... Yeah, I agree with that because uh, I'm currently based very north in Scotland, and going south is generally very easy. <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise, there's sea between me and Norway. And then you have to have a boat. Oh, a spaceship. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Janta, I can, I can, I can tell you uh, for my part that I am, I'm really happy that you chose to continue on the expedition after you hit Star One because um, the screenshots that you have been posting on the DECE eye candy thread has been absolutely amazing. So I, I want to ask you, what is your screenshot tricks that you use to to look that amazing? Ooh. Um, well, of, first of all, I take all the screenshots in high resolution. So that's where it starts, I think. And then it's mostly Photoshop. So. Mm. Oh. Um, what I noticed is that most what filters do you are, apply to them. It's all manual. It's, it's not not really a, a pre-composed filter filter to uh, get it done. It, it's really manual labor. Yeah. But generally, um, the pictures from the game are, are way too dark. So the first thing I always do is uh, get a bit of light in it. Mm. So just the curves or the exposure to get it get things more visible and then it depends on the picture lightening certain parts um, increasing the saturation of the colors or you know it depends on the picture yeah so what what is your most is your favorite motif when you take a screenshot it Thanks. contains the T6. <laughs> I, <you know laughs> Most that. of the time, yeah. <laughs> um, and my client crashed again. I think I think the main motif is um, most of the times I look for things that are not dark, you know? Yeah. Like when you're uh, uh, above an icy ring or a very light planet or something with beautiful colors or... Yeah. Th so something close to the primary star or, or the star in general and uh, icy worlds, perhaps? Yes, things like that. Because if you look at, in general at all the screenshots, you know, they're all oh, in space. So it's, so it's all very dark. So if you find something that's very light because you're close to a ring or anything else, it's, it's automatically uh, it's popping out because it's something different than everybody else does. Really wish that we could bring along our own light source uh, in yeah. our ships and, and place them where we want to. So just a tiny star would do it for me, and an old class star, for instance, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we would have to have the Panda Clipper in in game, and I don't think we are getting one anytime soon. Uh, I ended up in a different instance with uh, Tony Frost and. Commander Klatz and Commander Tank Saltome. I think I will stay here because 
it's uh, it's it's oh, yeah, used. It's not used for me to try to get back to there and the crash again, so I will do the rest of the stream from this instance. Roger because, that, Anka. Uh, because that was really going nuts. So we can do the must jump in this instance and... Oh my god. thing you were saying about the darkness of the pictures um, I can definitely relate to that because um, after I've been starting using uh, Google photo to to upload the pictures and apply the the natural filter mm -hmm. the range of filters in in, in Google photo I, I think you have my own pictures have have been uh, taking a turn for the better so yeah, I absolutely give you that. They definitely need to need need to have more light or be lightened up uh, before you post them to to the forum. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sometimes when I find a good motif, I upload it to Google Photo. I apply the Google filter, and then I put them back into Imgur. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I I don't use Photoshop as as you do. Uh, in I first thing I I don't have Photoshop. So and the second thing I I wouldn't know how to use it. I <laughs> paintbrush, but that's about it. And Google Photo, of course. But I really enjoy the photos of the T6 and especially the the paint job you have applied to the to the T6. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yes, I, I the, the, the paint job that I'm using is, is related to uh, my motorcycle helmet because it's uh, oh. painted in white and green and yellow also. So uh -huh. looking at the possibilities, I thought, I thought, well, this is something that that's really me. So that's how this one came about. Nice. Nice. What about you, Colin Free? Are you big on ship? Uh, well, my uh, it's a gold paint job. Because of bling bling. So you don't have that many paint jobs? Uh, I have one in my I have one in my Cobra that was a limited edition PC gamer job that I got a while back but other than that uh, yeah uh, I like my gold ass but um, is, my, is, ships, is, my, my, my ships my ships are fun my ships are functional for the most part so yeah. they're not gonna have paint for long yeah there is that um jobs on our ships that that vanishes fairly quick when when you go out i, I think i was uh, two or three weeks out when my uh, paint was basically reduced to zero percent but i heard about a trick that if, if you uh, if you if you used to turn off your shield when, when you are away from the bubble to reduce the, your power consumption and, and run a cooler ship, then if, if that that finishes off your paint job faster than if you fly with your shields on. So oh, in theory, when when when, when you turn your shields shields on, the, the paint job paint job should last longer. Well, that's peculiar. Uh, and and I understand the reason because I heard it from uh, customer support. They they mentioned that to me, um, and said if uh, your shields on, the paint job will last longer. I tried that, but I couldn't really see it. So it may work or it may not work. I. Uh, I, I prefer a cooler ship than a cool paint job, I must admit. <laughs> mm. 
what what has been your most extraordinary experience or fascinating story you can tell from the ECE? Uh, for me, um, I think the most interesting find so far has been a green system very close to the Ericsson star mm. that was not on um, EDSM. So nice. I was a bit proud of that. Yeah. So how high were the polonium percentage on on, on that green system? I don't know. I don't remember. And I don't know if percentages per se really mean something because there's been a lot of discussion about that. You know, percentage is very high and you still can find it. And sometimes it's very low and it's all over the place. But but mind you, I'm I'm not really sure there is that big a difference if, if you find a, a planet with polonium with say 1.0% and 1.1%, I'm I'm not really sure that there is any significant it's, it's difference. Te it's technetium that you can't find technically. <laughs> technetium? Mm. More like technotium. Yeah, what's that? It's the material you the need material. to make the premium SRV hull. Repair. Ah, technology. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think I've specifically ever gone after technology. I've only ever bothered with the uh, with the jamponium. And if I ever found te technosium, then it's uh, well ju just a result of going after. Ponium materials. There's a nice amount yeah, of ships in this system. I probably only have three uh, technetium. Mm. So I I think the changes they they made in in Fridado was was pretty excellent for for explorers. Even though they added carbon as a needed material for for each jamponium. Uh, class. Um, so we, we no longer had to be bookkeepers of our materials and throw materials out whenever we ran out of uh, space for our materials. So I, I think that the changes that that were made after 3.0 was pretty excellent material-wise. Not just that, the planetary surfaces as well. Yeah, absolutely. They, they've gotten much more attractive. Absolutely. I haven't figured out if, if there are any changes uh, or, or differences between the actual colors uh, on the planets. I don't know if you find more materials on, on the dark patches or more materials on the light patches or if there are any differences. And I haven't seen anything mentioned on the forum about that. I've not tried that either, now you mention it. It, it could be there are differences. I haven't found any. I haven't. Colon free. What what has been your most um, exciting experience on traveling out to to Beagle Point? I think that would be uh, honestly. I think that would have to be meeting meeting another commander sixty five thousand light years out from Seoul. It was the last time I went to Sagittarius A, I did it solo, and yeah, I didn't see anyone. And yeah, it, it's it's nice to see people this far out. Yeah, it has. And when we initially get the, got this expedition started, I, I noticed that the BP and I uh, wrote to Wishblend saying that it, it could be cool if we could meet up and, and there was some scheduling that that made it look like we, we could end up at Beagle Point at the same time. It's almost oh. half, half a year ago, so that was pretty pretty exciting that it actually came to fruition that, that we could 
have these two expeditions meet at the point from from Seoul. That was pretty excellent. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in my radar. Uh, I, I see a lot of I see a lot of anacondas and, and orcas and belugas. Uh, the Beluga is a very nice ship. And I also Why see... see a federal assault ship. What are you doing that far out here, mate? There's someone here in a fast. Really? I, I see a federal assault ship, and I think that's an NPC. Ooh. And his ship name is Beast. Oh dear. That's a oh my god, I'm, I'm getting scanned. Wait, no, wait are I... we supposed to be leaving now, or...? No. No, no. In eight minutes... We are supposed to do the mass jump in, in eight minutes. So for, for me personally, this this week at Beagle Point definitely has had some some really fun moments for me, especially in in regards with the SRV race. That oh yeah, really I, awesome. oh yeah, I forgot to mention I went to the three house as well. Didn't get the chance to go to Ishker's Reach, but I'm probably going to do that on Distant Worlds 2. Joining the Distant Worlds 2? Yeah. Well, yeah, once we get out to Beagle Point on that. Yeah, I, I know a lot of commanders on, the, on our expedition is also joining the Distant Worlds expedition and that's pretty pretty awesome considering the distance we have been traveling and the amount of jumps we have been doing. So signing up for an expedition that is more or less to start right after we come return home yeah, on, well, from, from this expedition is pretty awesome. You know, I signed up for it before I left the bubble and... After that, I thought, well, I might as well do a dummy run just to make sure that I could do it, you know? Mm, yeah. And I uh, took a different route, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. Could you go straight through onto Beagle Point and, yeah, with, with the 42 jump range? Obviously, you could, I think. Via the, the Runcible Crossing. I don't know, my average jump range is 51, so... Oh, 51, wow. Oh, so you could pretty much punch through the, the abyss. Yeah, I... Oh, yeah, well, I... Yeah, I... I basically punch the abyss. The only reason I haven't gone to Esker's Reach yet is because... I've no Japonium. I'm just lacking Polonium. Yeah. Yep. So we have about five minutes left of the interview. Um, what else do you like to do in Elite Dangerous when you're not out exploring? Mercenary work, I think. So shooting NPCs? Yeah. And uh, would that be in your Aspect Explorer, or what, what uh, ship do you, uh, you use? Generally, if I need hard points, I will use a Vulture. Your Vulture, yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, I can't express how much I love it. It's a small ship with medium hard points. Medium-sized ship hard points, you know? Yeah. So... Medium, medium ship and a small frame. Yeah. So, what weapons are you having on your vulture? Incendiary multi cannons and some beam lasers. Is 
So you don't have a problem with uh, your, your power power plant. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah, I've got an a, I've got an A class uh, power plant on there. Um, oh, which my, 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 my only issue with my vulture is that yeah, my weapons aren't powerful enough. I, I'm not having an issue with heat management. It's just yeah, it's not doing enough DPS. <laughs> Yeah. And how about you, Janta? What what do you like to do in Elite Dangerous when you're not out ex exploring the galaxy? Well, most of the time it's just uh, trying to improve modules, uh, visiting engineers, um, working on my my rank with certain uh, factions, uh, that kind of stuff. And it's also because I've not been playing for very long, so I don't have a lot of money. So. It's mostly trying to improve the ships that I have. Yeah. Well, you should have some credits when we return to the bubble and, and you can sell your exploration data. Well, yeah. According to Elite Dangerous Discovery, I should be okay. Yeah. <laughs> and how much does uh, ED Discovery say you can cash okay. in now? Uh, 435 million. Nice. So, but that's okay. obviously without the first discovery bonus, so it's probably a bit more. I went back to the bubble to sell my exploration data, and I, I think I wound up with about 3.7, no, 3.5 billion credits. Halfway through the exploration, so it was also with the Li Yong Li Yong Rung Li Yong Rui, <laughs> the Alliance block. This instancing thing is really bugging me now. Uh, there's at least two different instances at the moment, and I. I really have no clue where everyone is located at the moment, but I just think that we have to try and make the jump what we have at the moment, so... Yeah, um, I can see five commanders now. There's, I think there's like seven commanders in this instance, so, or eight, or so. Oh. I was oh, counting I'm, on... Uh, I'm in the same instance as uh, Yanta. Yeah, me too, I think. I was counting on a mass jump with 200 ships, but obviously <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> obviously not. That is not going that's to happen. That's fine. At least we won't have frame drops. <laughs> yeah, but it's exactly. one minute until the mass jump, so spool up your FSDs now, but don't... Have uh, I it. should probably charge my notes. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are, go ahead and spool up. We are getting a lot of scans by the pirates in our instances, and it's really annoying. <laughs> and by a type 10, and it's not you, Thank you. Yeah. I've oh. not been scanned yet. Well, I think the pirates are wondering why there's a cargo ship in Beagle Point. What are all those empty ships doing here? Mm hmm. So, Janta, any last words you want, you want to convey to, to the fleet? T minus 30 seconds. Uh, well, to everybody, um, fly safe, fly dangerous, it doesn't matter, just have fun. Free. Enjoy any the last words? Back. Yeah, just enjoy the third part. It's been nice meeting up with you. Yeah, you too. You too. It has been awesome meeting the BP guys. Yeah, yeah. greetings to. Pickle Punt Expedition. Bye. Fly safe. Bye. Adios. We will see you in the bubble, commanders. Oh my god. This must be elected. Oh my god. Oh. Super cruise for the while and have a cigarette.
The last job in our instance was a bit sad, to be, to be honest. Yeah, um, mine too, because the minute I switched to free cam, my game froze. I think the, the jumping from the tourist beacon was a mistake because all, of all those pirates and I don't know if they affected the, the instancing, but it made life a bit difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that's a lesson. That's a lesson learned, Hanger. Yeah, and I don't think jump from tourist beacons. It's farewell to Beagle Point. It was well. To be fair, oh, uh, a bunch of us ended up in the same system afterwards. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice. Has to do that. <laughs> so many commanders in this system now. But yeah, I for me, I definitely had a fun week, and I I had some really fun fun moments. Uh, yeah, me too. Definitely. And oh, absolutely, it was fun week, despite of the fact that most of the planned activities and events didn't go as planned because I think people had like real life and other stuff. And unfortunately, as you know, instancing. Yeah, and I don't think was there any commanders in those SRV hill climb races. I know I didn't couldn't participate because of real life and but I hope someone did. But it's real life. Yeah, I don't know either if anyone did the mountain climb. I don't know, but certainly the SRV race was, was fun on, on, until we hit not only the exploding SRV bug, but also the dropping FPS jump, which was really... Yeah, it was a bit annoying. So uh, you should definitely go ahead and make a bug report to, yeah, to Frontier. Yeah, I will. Although I think that it won't do nothing, but it doesn't cost anything so I will make it. Oh holy moly I just jump and I got a lot of commanders here. Mm -hmm. It is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My wow, is full. Yeah. So but I let's have to find a planet and do an SRV race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh oh yeah you just jumped into the system. But I was just gonna pop out I was gonna pop out for the wee smoke break and sit in Super Cruise for a while. I have to say I'm there's two two things I'm quite disappointed during this week. One is that uh, that those FPS problems we had with the during the SRV race. Uh, it was obvious why it was, but I think Frontier needs to push up their server limits. And the other one, and the biggest gripe for me is this instancing shit. I'm so fed up with it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I could definitely use some improvement. I really don't know how they are going to pull the squadron thing out of their ass with this kind of instancing. I, I well, really I know. know how they are going to get around it, Hinka, because they said that they won't look at instancing uh, with uh, when they are looking at. Squadrons, so mm -hmm. in their mind, those two things are not really connected. Although a lot of players, I know a lot of players think that they that they really are. Yeah, but I really, I really think that they need to do something for the instancing because it's the biggest problem. What comes oh, to multiplayer? Yeah. It is really bad. Yeah, really, it's really, it's really, really bad. bad. Yeah. I don't think we will see any more 100 commander instances. That's those days. Are, those days are gone. Yeah, I, I think you're right because we had trouble getting 16 commanders together. Mm -hmm. That was real pain. Uh, yeah. I think this is a nice spot to end the talk show. Uh, do you have any final words? I think Macros, you asked already, but. Yeah, I did. But if you still have something today, say, Commander, then by all means, go ahead. 
And if you don't, I I want to say that I again that I really enjoyed this this week at Beagle Point. And yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, it, it's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah same here. It's been fun. Th thanks for inviting um, me. I will. I would like to thank Beagle Point Expedition commanders from their participation in our SRV races and we've had some fun moments, like Macros said. So I will always have fly safe Beagle Point Expedition and hopefully we'll all make it back to the Colonia safely. Mm. Safe journeys guys. I'm yeah. gonna head off now. Yeah. yeah. So thank Bye. you Chanta and Column Tree for joining us at the talk show. Yeah, it's no problem. No problem. Thanks for having me. I'll, I'll hopefully bump into you in Colonia at some point. Yeah. So I think this is it then. Uh, good night from me, and we will see you in a week in Beagle. Uh, Beagle Point. No. <laughs> we will see you in Beagle Point. Uh, Base Camp 16 will be the next for DC. Yeah. See you, Inga. See, see you, Bye. Adios. Bye. Bye.